spoken to Lieutenant Governor earlier. That was a pretty cool idea. I'm kind of like wishing we had thought of it first, but to get the valedictorians and the salutatorians to do little video mm-hmm. uh, messages, that's something I'm excited to watch. Okay. Well, I mean, we can actually just request for the videos anyway. I mean, right. we're paying yeah. for it, so We, why we not? are. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> and these are like highly produced, yeah. you know, freaking, they got the, what do you call that thing in the camera that's on the, the jib maybe? Yeah. Anyway, uh, the right. camera on the, what's that's a called? movie making stuff right there. I mean, yeah, we're way beyond selfie sticks now. <laughs> Okay, so as far so as far as the grad and goes go, right, uh, right? Last Thursday we had the very first. So Ukudu High School, right, the second newest high school on Guam, second newest public high school, has the dubious distinction of being the very first grad and go school. So congrats to the Bulldogs, they were the first. A um, couple days later, JFK had theirs. JFK always has a big um, graduating class, so go green and gold. They had that, um, and then yesterday, um, did you guys see how big Southern High's graduating class was? Yesterday, I mean, first of all, you gotta love the school colors, mm-hmm. and Adriana put like in you know her web article, the teal is for real, and I mean they look great in their cap and gowns. Wow, the teal is for real, and yeah. that's the deal. There, you, thank you. You added. Yeah. Are Are you gonna copyright that? No, that's good. We're yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> put that on SoundCloud, and you know, like get get paid for that. But um, three hundred and seven students was their graduating class. Wow, that's pretty good. And then I know um, today at eight thirty. Uh, GDOE was actually streaming my alma mater's graduation, so congratulations to the Sharks. Um, and then Thursday is Teeson High, so the Titans will graduate. Friday is JP Torres Success Academy, and then Saturday is your alma mater, Mr. Burnett. Can you guys hear that? <laughs> <laughs> Through the, the mask. The, the geckos. <laughs> Right, what? and so we're doing all these grads, uh, Jay, but let's not forget that we're also promoting all the graduates on uh, the stations at KUAM, too. Oh, yeah. And we have had a lot of FD people, like, on our on, on the um, Head of the Class special, which mm-hmm. airs Monday, Wednesday, Friday. You can watch it during the news. It's fantastic. Um, there's a lot of FD guys. I mean, FD's always got, like, big classes anyway, but, I mean, there, there's a lot of people with, you know, like, and they all, they all look great in their cap and gowns, right, mm-hmm. um, the FD guys, but... Uh, let's get let's get all the schools, but make sure you know to tune in because we are going to feature every single one of the ones that we um, that we got, and it is a fantastic segment. It, people are loving it. Yeah, all schools. Yeah. And what what do you guys think of the uh, grad and go ceremonies like so far? As far as like the way they're produced and everything like that, really really nice job. Right. Are, are we paying for that? Um. Yeah. As, yeah like with public funds and. Yeah. I mean, like. Probably. Uh, yeah, I mean, at some team. level, yeah. probably. But, you know, my, my no, mom... they are really nice. My mom, as an educator, was kind of worried, and she goes, you know, I'm really... She goes, it really just concerns me that as a teacher, we're not giving these students that the graduation experience that they have earned, that, you know, um, that that they can have with their families, with their classmates, with the faculty and everything like that. Well, I was like, you know what? But the kids look happy as clams, because for them and their generation, they've got something that lives on facebook on youtube on right. tiktok and yeah. i mean this this is their thing and you know and they look like they're having the time of their lives that's why we kind of stepped it up on our end to do this uh, head of the class thing is because we know that covid19 has thrown a massive curveball um right at our graduates and not just here i mean and, and it doesn't make it okay <laughs> that it's all over the world but any way we can uh, kind of like bookmark this momentous uh, occasion for not just for the grads, but for their families. Like, I mean, that's such a huge part of of the graduation uh, process is the party, mm-hmm. the family gathering. And so that's why we kind of have done this thing with head of the class where, and you go in the comments and you read them on uh, any of our social media networks, it's crazy. I mean, people, uh, this is the new graduation party. And when you guys get off of work and, you know, like on the days when Ukudu and then JFK graduated, did you guys see like the cars that were driving around? They're all decked out. You know, they've got, like, the big puffy balloons on them. You know, they've mm-hmm. got the streamers. They've already taken... Uh, th- when you guys graduated from high school, did you guys take your uh, take your tassel and hang it from your rearview mirror? Gosh, that's so long ago. I did that for three years when I was at UOG. I still had the silver and black. And it's like class of 92. It was already, like, 1995 by that point. And everybody was like, God. I, I got to shout out my young guns, man, because we had our own little grad. Uh, it was a promotional uh, for pre-K and kindergarten up at DL Paris. Oh, yeah. On Saturday. And so I, w- I was actually part of the uh, caravan, mm-hmm. <laughs> two-car caravan, 
with uh, my girl Callie, uh, Callie Joe, and, and my son Chase. Congratulations. And so uh, that was really cool. There were parents were just so into it. I mean, you'd think you're into the high school grad. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know when we started doing grads for pre K and K, but and I was <laughs> always a kind of a hater on it, you know. And you hate on it until you're part of it. I was like, you know, these kids nowadays. Oh God, they need a trophy for every time they graduate. They got to get recognized every grade. But I mean, it's like kind of like the carrot in front of the horse thing. You know, the kids they look forward to. I mean, not I'm, and my kids weren't even looking forward to like the ceremony. They just wanted to go back to school. Mm -hmm. see their teacher maybe see some of their classmates and the way they did it was uh really cool um you know and it got a shout out to all the schools because um you know there wasn't just one at dlp and maria joe all the elementary schools have had them and how ours uh, worked was we we kind of all drove in Mm -hmm. got down uh they gave them the diplomas and then there was like a photo backdrop where they could take a picture and then you drive up um and that was kind of going smooth then you drove up to another spot where you would get down and then they would coordinate it so that uh, whichever you know students had received their diploma on this side, the teacher of those students would be there to take a photo with the kids. And they had like a whole backdrop. So then there was a lot of uh, thought and effort and ex- good execution that went into it. And I just want to recognize um, all the uh, Guam Department of Education uh, employees, as well as the parents and everything for uh, you know ma- pulling this off because you know, it was a huge uh, COVID curveball, and we didn't know how to deal with it. And I think that we're we're all just really making the most of it. And if I may, I'd like to give a special shout out of my own to you know, I mean, yeah, entire GDOE from you know um, the administration all the way down. You know, fantastic job. I've watched all the live streams. I mean, if they don't give you chicken skin, there's something wrong with you because these are really emotional, you know, in positive ways. But but special shout out especially goes out to the one to one school aides. And the paraproles, because you know those people, those men and women, they have a really special connection with all of the students, and they're like, you know, they've put in the videos that they've made, they've taken the time to do that because they all say they're like, you know, we we treat these kids as if they're our own, and you know, we never really got the chance to say goodbye, and you know, as adults, we get what it means when you have a very special class of kids come through, and you know, they have their own personality, uh, their own vibe, you know, like um, a lot of them are very, very, you know. You know they're upbeat and they're very successful. And for us, as you know, as student aides or something like that, you know, we never got to say, "Hey, have a good summer." You know, like good luck in your next school year and everything like that. So for them, it's a chance for you know, for them to say, you know, to give them their well wishes too. So you know, the, the school aides are thrilled at this. Time. Of course, mm-hmm. I mean, these are people. It means who, so much to them. They, in some cases, they might spend more time with your kid than you do. Yeah. yeah. I want to give a shout out to the parents. <laughs> yeah. um, we're kind of oh, like homeschool teachers we go. <laughs> uh, during this time and helping their, you know, their children, uh, teachers. Speaking of empathy, <laughs> I, I, I learned how to do class dojo, and uh, <laughs> I just sent you a pic of my kids with their diplomas. In case you wanna. So, Jay, yeah. do you want to put up my pic uh, of my kids yeah. with their diplomas just so I could proud dad over here? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's interesting. My son, I realized. Um, after seeing all of the graduations and the promotional ceremonies, my son's going into the sixth grade. Isn't that middle school? Yeah, yeah. it is. It's yeah, like the see? bottom of middle school. Before yeah. middle school was seventh and eighth grade. Okay, right? on Guam they've never called it junior high, right? That's like Wait, that's a state. That's a state thing. No, no sixth grade is middle school now. But I remember when I was going to middle school it was like seven, eight. seventy nine. Yeah, yeah. Right. ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah. Whenever oh, anybody anybody is? said, "Oh, are you junior high?" I was like, "I don't even know what you're talking about." Now. Yeah. But yeah, um, and then going back to what Bree had said about the parents, right? So you're mm-hmm. a, a Catholic school parent. Yeah. Um, and my oldest son goes over to FD, and dude, these guys like they never stop getting. He it, it was almost like he was getting more homework <laughs> in the COVID than he got like in the before the COVID. And then we had heard so many <laughs> complaints. Sorry, Bree, I'm not trying to make light of your situation. I was, what? And now you're not complaining. But with the Catholic schools, like <laughs> someone had told me, there's a difference between teaching and assigning. <laughs> and so what I guess is happening is the teachers are assigning all this stuff that the parents have to basically execute on and, and you know, do the work with the kids, which is no one's saying, you know, you shouldn't have to do anything with your kids. But it reached a level where Sabrina was, you know, typing up the news on one hand and then working on her boys project with the other 
because I mean I feel like you can be a teacher now. <laughs> no. Like you're qualified. <laughs> there's ever a shortage we might lose you and you know and the stuff that kids are doing these days i mean you know you you said your son was putting together a powerpoint presentation mm. i didn't learn powerpoint till i was two years out of college i just learned powerpoint uh when my son had to do I, I still don't know powerpoint <laughs> i mean I was like jason can you help me with this powerpoint <laughs> i mean there are there are literally yeah. kids in the seventh grade right now that know how to write code mm-hmm. better than i do and yeah. i've been doing this for 25 years wow right. I mean, they're doing some advanced stuff, and, and we—I think we may have the uh, the comment. It's up on your screen now, Kurt. The the comment of the day from Elizabeth Gumatautau. Class of 2020 are our biggest heroes. That's beautiful. Congrats mm-hmm. to all graduates. Did you mm-hmm. show my picture or what? Yeah, um, I I need a phone. Okay, my phone's back. Uh, that's fine. Here, yeah, just take this home. Okay, yeah. Can you say? Okay, if you, if you airdrop that to me, I'll put. Yeah, that we'll up. just it's next time. The mm-hmm. moment passed. Yeah, well, and speaking of school, we're still waiting for our GDOE to make their final announcements on the status of school for next school year. For me, I kind of know that my son might be starting school in July. In July. In July, right, yeah. going to school for about 11 months, and still waiting for the final details on right. how that's all going to work out, but I think uh, it's going to be more um, distance learning. Right, or some kind of hybrid. Right, right. right. So, and, uh, and I mean, I know that uh, we had John Fernandez on, we get him on every week, and he was basically saying that this is like the big conversation that they're having, right, is how to start school again. Right. And I mean, we've heard all kinds of ideas, and this is just a discussion. Uh, they were talking about uh, split scheduling, mm-hmm. right? Maybe you have some a group of kids going to school later in the day, some going earlier in the day. But you know, I thought was interesting was he, uh, was saying that a lot of these discussions, when they go from discussion to decision, a big uh, part of the decision-making process is considering uh, what the parents got to do because parents are working, childcare, obviously there's no daycare. Mm-hmm. And so I, I think it's really uh, thoughtful of them to kind of consider, um, you know what I mean? And also if parents are, um, you know, are they, you know, willing to let their child you know, go back to into the classroom. Are they comfortable right. with it? Me, I'm still, I'm not sure. I was going to ask about that. As, as parents, you know, I, I always ask the two of you guys, as, as parents, and Chris, you've had kids at like every single educational level right now, right? Like what? Your, your eldest daughter, oh, she's, whoa, whoa. she's what? No, I mean, she's what? She's post-doctorate now. Yeah, right? Jay, I got a lot of kids. Today. Yeah. <laughs> no, but everybody, I mean. Everybody, I got five kids, everybody. And you're an amazing <laughs> father. And, 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 and I mean, no, that's sincere. No, you're right. I got a girl in college. I got a boy in high school. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. The so, younger three are in elementary. And so, and so, but, you know, as as parents, are you guys in any way even a little bit apprehensive of just, you know, them going back to, yeah. to full classes? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Of course. Totally. All the way. Mm-hmm. I don't want them to go back to school. I mean, part of it is because, you know, I get to spend more time with them. But, mm-hmm. uh, you know, also, there's just so many factors that are beyond your control. Right. I mean, sending your kids off to school, it's not even a trust thing. I mean, I trust everyone um, that, you know, works uh, at especially my younger kids at, th- at their school. I mean, I know them all. How many parents that you guys should be involved at a level where you should be on a first name basis with a lot of the people who work at your kid's school? I mean, I know I'm fortunate to have a, you know, flexibility with a lot of my time to do that. But, um, yeah, it's not a trust issue. I'm confident that the employees and the staff at GDOE. I mean, that's their number one thing is, you know, for the most part, the safety of mm-hmm. the kids. And so I, I trust them to execute it. But, again, there's just so many unknown factors. I mean, y- they could be doing social distancing, doing all kinds of things. It just takes that one knucklehead kid to go, like, rub their eye and stick it in your kid's mouth. or, You know, I mean, I, I, two, two, two kids, kids do what kids do. Two kids they, share a drink. or you know, They bite each other in school. You know what yeah. I mean? That's, they're little kids, dude. <laughs> Sorry. No, I'm not, I, I've been like that with my son. He's yeah. outside playing in the neighborhood, and, and then there was a kid. He was outside with his iPad, and the kid was sitting. Oh, I saw it. He came and sat right next to him, and I just happened to pull up, and I yelled because uh, he's quite a distance at the other house. And I was like, Brock, get over here. Get away from that kid. I, I'm, oh, sure, yeah. I'm sure those weren't your exact words because I've heard you yell, so I'm sure there were. No, that was, those were my exact okay. words, Brock. Get over here. And he was like, hey, mom, you know, I was like, what are you doing? You are not supposed to be sitting, you're supposed to be six feet away. Um, You're not supposed to be sitting really close to somebody. And he's like, I tried to tell him, mom, and I go, Hmm. I don't care. (laughs) And, you know, he's like, you know, mom, I don't want to talk to you anymore. (laughs) 
My mom said you got to scoot over. Chris, how, how, have you, how have your kids reacted to, you know, the, the lockdown period and then the online dis, online learning and now, my you know, kids the are, specter of maybe, maybe not for the school year coming up? I mean, my kids, they take it serious. Like, they still take the COVID so serious. Good. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, there was and a And that's part, a testament to you. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're all their family. Uh, but w- in the Grad and Go ceremony, the part where I told you they get down and they get the diploma, they go over to this backdrop. And that's where the parents take the picture of the kids. And so um, what the, one of the school aides uh, was telling the kids is like, when you go in the backdrop because it's away from everybody, you can remove your mask for the picture. Mm-hmm. And so when it came to my kids' uh, turn, like they didn't want to remove their mask. My boy Chase is like, no, I don't want to get sick. So they take it serious. Like they, I mean, they haven't even got down at the store with me for the whole COVID. Wow. And like if I have something to do, like buy groceries, I'll make sure that, you know, they either stay with their mom or my oldest boy watches them, and then I get down in the grocery store. So, yeah, the the most public we've been is we've gone to uh, a beach, which isn't even a public beach. It's kind of like we go to the public beach, and then we walk around past everybody and get way uh, down to our own spot. So mm-hmm. I'm very fortunate, and I think if my young guns are taking it serious the way they are, then I can only imagine other kids are also taking it serious. Well, my son <laughs> is not... Is the and now for the contrarian viewpoint <laughs> is your child. I try. I talk to him about you know why you have to wear a mask, and he just I don't want to say he doesn't care. He just wants to go out and play outside. You play mean he's basketball. being a kid? He's being yeah, a kid. Yeah, plays right. volleyball, and you know it's kind of hard for him to do all that with the mask. And I mean I've gotten cool looking masks. <laughs> the she got the skull mask. She got I mean, the. I tried to make it be ben cool for mask. him, and he's just like, I'm not having it. I'm like, baby, but you don't want me to get sick. You, you get him a nice, like, pink, pink mask with a lot of flowers, and be like, you're going to wear this one until you learn to wear I mean, a mask. I've got the one. mask with the Guam on it, and, you know, the half a day, <laughs> the, the camouflage, and it's just not working. I had the conversation. So I don't know what else to do. If anybody has know. some advice, please post it. Cause yeah, th- this was not in in the the parenting Bible, right? And right. what would I, what would I know about that? But you know, you have these conversations like, what do you do if you know if someone that you don't know approaches you? You know, there's the birds and the bees conversation. There's right. you know what what you know, mommy, I'm, yeah. I'm scared to go to school by myself. But then you, <laughs> no one thought that you were gonna have some sort of conversation mm-hmm. with your kids. Right. I'd rather about talk about the birds and the bees. The COVID, it's so heavy. I mean, and life I've and death. A, and I've tried different <laughs> techniques. I've been the nice mom having a conversation with her son. Then I've had the, hey, I told you oh. to wear a mask. Do well, you want to die? <laughs> well, you know what? Okay. <laughs> I just went to straight, do you want to die? On, on that note. I've done know. that too. Just do you? Do you want daddy to die? Yeah. Okay. Then put on the damn mask. <laughs> okay. Hey, that, that's Jamar, that's Jamar parenting right there, bro. <laughs> tough, tough love. <laughs> <laughs> that's tough. That and you get the point across. That's you tough. You know, if I die, we're not gonna get you truly because there can only be twenty four people at the <laughs> funeral. Okay, that is, that is from the parenting I guide. I haven't gone that far. Under you the ch- under the yet. chapter of Chamorro guilt trip, that always works. I'm telling you, uh, <laughs> I was raised by people with black belts in the Chamorro guilt trip. So <laughs> I picked up some things. Fifth degree, <laughs> right? Uh, Nine forty nine. Hey, we're gonna end this show on a good note. If it's the last thing uh, that we do, and it will actually be the last thing that we do. Um, And we'll keep on this uh, theme of education and uh, graduations with our good note. Uh, In the meantime, we'll take a short break at 949. It's the KUAM News Takeover, Guam's favorite, containing COVID. Locally Keeping you informed, KUAM News brings you Banking 671. Brought to you by the Bank of Guam, the People's Bank, and Coast 360 Federal Credit Union. Together, we thrive. KUAM News COVID-19 